Hello, my name is Pamela Baker and I am on the Data and Technology team at the Allen Institute for Brain Science in Seattle. Today I'm going to be talking about features for storing intracellular electrophysiology data in neurodata without borders format. In the introductory tutorials, we have introduced some of the basic features in NWB in the context of extracellular electrophysiology and optical physiology experiments. In this session, I'm going to discuss features in NWB specifically for storing data and metadata associated with intracellular electrophysiology. I'm going to start by taking you through some of the basic features in the schema and look at some code examples in both PyNWB and MATNWB. Later in the session, Oliver will describe some more advanced additions to the schema for representing intracellular experiments in NWB. Intracellular electrophysiology involves recording either current or voltage across a cell membrane. Unlike extracellular recording, we can observe not only spiking activity, but also subthreshold events. We can use intracellular recording to estimate cell membrane properties such as the membrane time constant, as well as ionic and synaptic conductances. Using pharmacological blockers and agents, we can also observe currents that are mediated by single species of ion channels. These recordings are thus useful for collecting data that can be used to classify neurons into different cell types. And one example of such a project is the Allen Institute's Cell Types Database. There are two main types of intracellular experiments. In voltage clamp experiments, the stimulus that is applied to the cell is a command voltage that sets the membrane potential of the cell. And the response that is recorded is the resulting current that flows through the intracellular electrode. In current clamp recordings, the stimulus is a current waveform that is injected through the intracellular electrode and the resulting membrane voltage is what is recorded. So there are multiple types of data and metadata that we need to store for complete descriptions of intracellular recording sessions. This includes time series to store stimulus and response, voltage and current data, as well as a structure for grouping simultaneously generated waveforms together to facilitate later analysis. We need to store metadata for devices such as electrodes, amplifiers, and analog to digital converters. And we also need fields to include metadata for the experimental preparation, including the information about the experimental subject and the slice preparation. In addition to the neurodata types that were discussed in the basic tutorials, NWB provides multiple structures designed specifically for storing intracellular electrophysiology data as summarized in this diagram. To represent current and voltage traces, we have a patch clamp, patch clamp series type that is an extension of the time series neurodata type, including metadata relevant for intracellular experiments. Patch clamp series include a reference to an intracellular electrode data type that contains session level metadata on the electrode recording and preparation. Intracellular electrodes also include a reference to a device object for storing metadata from any other relevant recording devices, such as signal amplifiers and converters. NWB includes two classes that extend the patch clamp series data type specifically for storing stimulus traces that are voltage clamp stimulus series and current clamp stimulus series. These differ only in the expected units of the signals that are stored with volts for voltage clamp and amperes for current clamp stimuli. Finally, we have both voltage clamp series and current clamp series um, that extend patch clamp series with the addition of appropriate metadata fields for voltage clamp and courage clamp recordings, respectively. Now I'm just gonna quickly take you through the properties associated with these new neurodata types, and then we will take a look at some code examples to see how they are used. We begin with intracellular electrodes. This data type includes metadata for the recording preparation, um, such as any filtering that was applied to the signal initial access, electrode, and seal resistances, uh, location data for the recorded cell, and any relevant information about the slice preparation. In addition, this type contains a reference to a recording device object with its associated metadata. Patch clamp series is, is the base class for all the stimulus and required response traces in intracellular recording sessions. In addition to basic time series information, Patch clamp series includes a reference to an intracellular electrode um, that was used to do the recording, fields for signal gain, and a description of any stimulus applied. 
In addition, patch clamp series have a field for a sweep number that is used to associate patch clamp series that are recorded simultaneously. The sweep number is user-defined and is used in NWB to group time series together, for example, to couple associated stimulus and response traces, or to group multiple responses for uh, multi-patch setups. The sweep number is a reference into a sweep table um, that stores information about this grouping in the NWB file. Because sweep tables extend dynamic tables in NWB, we can also add user-defined columns to the table to store sweep-level metadata. I will show how sweep tables can be created and accessed when we looked at the code examples. The voltage clamp series neurodata type extends patch clamp series with metadata fields specific for voltage clamp recording sessions. These include amplifier settings for uh, capacitance compensation and resistance compensation. I should also note here that these fields are not intended to be a complete specification of the amplifier settings that might be adjustable in a recording session. Um, however, further work on defining additional metadata for these experiments is an active area um, of development in NWB. Finally, current clamp series extends patch clamp series to store response traces from current clamp experiments. It also stores metadata that is typical for these types of experiments, including information about any bridge balance adjustments, uh, capacitance compensation, and any bias currents that have been applied. Now we're gonna take a look at some example code for creating NWB files in a Jupyter notebook. Now I'm gonna take you through a Jupyter notebook that shows how to create and save intracellular recording data in NWB file format using PyNWB. The first step is to create an NWB file object to store the data. We include a random identifier that uniquely identifies this NWB file. We also include other session level metadata, including the session start time, as well as information about the experimenter, the lab, and the institution. Next, we store metadata about the recording devices in a device object. To create a device, you can use the instance method nwbfile.createDevice. Electrode metadata is stored in an intracellular electrode object. To create an electrode for intracellular recordings, we use the NWB file instance method nwbfile.createIceFizElectrode. We include a reference to our device object here, along with additional metadata about the seal resistance and the slice preparation. There are two classes for representing stimulus data in NWB, voltage clamp stimulus series and current clamp stimulus series. Here we'll use a current clamp stimulus series to store current clamp stimulus data and then add it to our NWB file as a stimulus data trace using the method nwbfile.addStimulus. You see that I also added a sweep number when creating this stimulus object. Sweep numbers are used to group patch clamp series traces that were recorded simultaneously and provide a reference for lookup in a sweep table that is automatically created by PyNWB when the file is written. Now I'm going to create a stimulus for a second sweep. This is for a voltage clamp stimulus series this time, just for the purposes of illustration. Now let's generate some response traces to associate with our stimuli. In NWB, we have three classes for representing responses. Voltage clamp series, current clamp series, and I0 clamp series. I0 clamp series are used to store patch clamp series that don't have an associated uh, stimulus trace. Here I'm going to use current clamp series to store current clamp data for sweep zero and add it to the NWB file as response data using the method nwbfile.addAcquisition. Note that I've included the sweep number here to associate this with our previous current clip um, stimulus series.
Now I'm going to add voltage clamp data for sweep one using voltage clamp series and NWB file dot add acquisition. Now that we have stimulus and response traces added, we can write the NWB file using NWB HDF5 IO. So we've created an NWB file, and now we can read it back in to show how to retrieve intracellular recording data in PyNWB. For additional features you can use to load data from NWB files, you should also have a look at the basic tutorials for extracellular electrophysiology and optical physiology. So first I'm gonna read the file in. Now we can examine the file to see what stimulus traces are contained using nwbfile.stimulus. We can print out the name of names of the stimuli that were stored and then load the data from our selected stimulus trace using the nwbfile.getStimulus method. So there's a list of the available stimulus sweeps. And there is the data from current clamp stimulus sweep zero that we had loaded in. Grabbing response data can be done via the method nwbfile.getAcquisition. Again, we can check the list of available responses in the file using NWB file acquisition. And then we can take the name of one of the traces to read that um, response trace back in and look at the data. Now we can get a list um, if we want to retrieve electro data by reading nwb file dot ic phys electrodes. We can then use the name of the electrode to retrieve that specific electrode using nwb file dot get ic phys electrode. Alternatively, we can also access that electrode metadata using the current clamp series that we retrieved above. Um, and this can be exposed using patch clamp series dot electrode. Finally, we can also see the names of all the devices in the NWB file using the NWB file dot devices attribute and retrieve the device that, that we want to by adding, um, by using get device on that device name. Now, since we saved uh, the data to file using sweep numbers, Pi and WB automatically generated a sweep table object that we can query to return all of the sweeps associated with a given sweep number. So here we can look at the sweep table. You can see that the sweep table has two columns, a column named series, which holds the patch clamp series objects, and their associated sweep number is in the sweep number column. To retrieve a list of all of the sweep numbers in the sweep table, we can use sweep table dot sweep number. Remember that sweep numbers are user generated, so um, it's probably dangerous to assume that they are all sequential. Um, now we can retrieve the patch clamp series for that sweep using nwb file dot sweep table dot get series. And that returns a list of the sweeps in our file that are associated with sweep number zero. Um, there is also a sweep table to data frame method that will convert the sweep table to a data frame that can be inspected and used to access sweep numbers in the stimulus and response series. So if you like the formatting of a data frame better, that's what it looks like. We can retrieve sweep numbers look at data that comes from a particular patch clamp series and also retrieve metadata such as the electrode for a given patch clamp series. Now we're gonna look at a MATLAB live script with a code example to generate an NWB file using MATNWB. NWB. 
In this tutorial, we will create some data for a basic intracellular electrophysiology experiment and add it to an NWB file using MATNWB. An NWB file represents a single session of an experiment. Each file must have a session description, an identifier, and a session start time. We use the NWB file constructor to create a new NWB file object, including those fields as well as additional metadata. For all MAT NWB functions, we use the MATLAB method of entering keyword argument pairs, where arguments are entered as a name followed by a value. Metadata for recording devices is stored in device objects. Here we will create an analog to digital converter associated with our electrode and add it to our file. We use the general devices.sent method to create the device and then generate a link to this device that goes into general slash devices. We will use this link to reference the device when building our electrode. Now we can create an electrode to link with our patch clamp series. To store electrode metadata, we create an intracellular electrode object that includes a link to our device as well as a description. We also add a link to the electrode in general slash intracellular eFIS. Now we can go ahead and add some stimulus traces to our file. I will also add user-defined sweep numbers that allow us to associate stimulus patch clamp series with other simultaneously recorded traces. Here I am creating two current clamp stimulus series that share the same intracellular electrode, but you have different sweep numbers. Similarly, we can add response traces to our NWB file. Here I'm going to generate two current clamp series that have the same sweep numbers as the current clamp stimulus series that I just added to our file. Response data gets added to an NWB file using the acquisition.set method. To group our patch clamp series, we need to generate a sweep table. In MATNWB, sweep tables must be created by the user and added to the NWB file structure manually. Sweep tables are a dynamic table in NWB, and these allow custom columns to be added with additional sweep level metadata if desired. For further information on customizing dynamic tables, you can refer to the documentation. For simplicity here, we include example code to create a basic sweep table with the required columns sweep numbers um, that contain the associated user-defined sweep numbers and series that include references to the patch clamp series that we are including in the sweep table. We add this table to our NWB file by assignment to general intracellular EFIS sweep table. Once we've added all the data, we can write it to file using NWB export. To inspect our work, we can then read the file we just created back into MATLAB using NWB read. The available stimulus traces can be found in stimulus presentation. and you see it returns the name of the stimuli that we added to the file. I can now use a get method with that name to load the data. You'll notice that we use set methods to add data for our, to our file, and you typically use get methods to retrieve this data. Similarly, we can, receive, we can retrieve response traces from acquisition using the get method.
And finally, I've included a code snippet that allows us to retrieve traces from the sweep table by accessing using a sweep number. So here I've given it a sweep number of zero, and it returns the path to um, the response trace with sweep number zero that I added to the sweep table.